So last night I couldn't sleep and I was outside praying. I felt like the Lord was telling me to walk up this way. And so I came to this tree and the Lord gave me some observations and some insights that I hadn't seen before. So first of all, who can identify what variety of tree we have here? Um, it kind of looks like uh, the locust leaves a little bit. Okay, it does have a locust leaf pattern. It's not a locust. Um, use your gift, your God-given gift of observation and look more closely. Do you want to get something so I can show the camera? Is it a willow? No. Walnut? Yes. Yes, this is a black walnut. Um, one of the best ways to identify a tree is by smell. Um, so each, each leaf has a very distinct smell. And so if you'll crush the leaf, uh, it's one of the best ways to identify uh, a tree. Um, so you look at the pattern, the leaf pattern, the leaf structure. Um, you look at possibly the fruit that it may be bearing or the nuts it may be bearing. You, you crush a leaf and when you factor all those together, it'll help you identify and not misidentify a tree. Um, and even such things as how easily it breaks. You know, that's so easy to break versus a hickory branch. You couldn't do that. It, it just, it's too resilient to be able to just break it like that. So even testing the strength of it will help you to identify one tree versus another. What is the black walnut good for? Its wood is strong for, for building and, and for furniture. Yes. A table. Yes. Um, it, the wood is not super strong, but it, it is decently strong. And it's, uh, you mentioned tables, it makes beautiful furniture. What else would it be good for? Can you eat the nuts? Yes. Um, they're eating the nuts is like anti-parasitic. Um, they are shaped like your brain, so it's good amino acids. So if you're studying for tests, eat black walnuts or English walnuts. Um, what else is it good for? sturdy tree. I mean, birds may have nice habitats. Yes. What else is it good for? Climbing. Climbing, yes. What else is it good for? Uh, just appreciating nature. It's beautiful. I mean, it's very gorgeous right now in the season. What about the taproot? Does that have to do with anything? Okay. Does yes. It, does it have a deep yes. taproot? Yes. We're going to get to the taproot. There. Um, before we get to the taproot, uh, what else is it good for? If it was a really hot day, shade. Shade. <laughs> That's right. Yes. What else is it good for? This is something we don't fully understand, um, but Haiti at one time was a lush jungle, and they cut down like almost all their forest, and now like they have droughts, and it's very barren. Um, so. The walnut tree and not just the walnut tree specifically, but trees in general, the walnut tree being among them, by having a lot of trees, it somehow brings the rain. It's good to have a, a balance between grassland and forest, but those areas that have been deforested tend to lack rain. So they, they somehow help to bring rain. Okay, so Stephanie mentioned the taproot. Have you ever noticed a difference between the grass underneath an oak tree versus the grass under a black walnut tree? Mm -hmm. 
So I have noticed during periods of drought or very dry weather that if you look under an oak tree or a pine tree, the grass will be brown and, and just dried up. But when you look underneath of a black walnut tree, you'll see green, lush grass. Why is that? Because the taproot is deep and it has lots of water. Yes. It lots of water to it. Yes, so I have observed pine trees coming out in a storm and you have this big root ball sticking out of the ground. I've observed oak trees and the storm brings them down and they have this big root ball sticking up. But I'm 32 years old. I have never seen a storm take a black walnut tree out. I've seen it split up there, but I've never seen the root ball of the black walnut. It just, the tap root goes down, 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 down. And so it doesn't need lots of feeder roots to come out here and get moisture. It just doesn't need it. The tap root just goes down, 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 and gets the water. And so then the grass underneath it, this was mowed so it doesn't really give you a good perspective, but I wish that I could show you pictures of an oak tree this size during the drought and the black walnut this size during the drought. And you'll, it's a marked day and night contrast. So there's that deep, 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 deep taproot. And so I have never, ever, ever, ever in my 32 years of life seen a storm take a black walnut out by the roots, ever. It just has that deep of a taproot. Uh, what other trees have very deep tap roots? A cypress? Yeah, they definitely have a, quite an extensive root system. Cypress doesn't necessarily have a deep tap root, but it has an extremely extensive root system. All the nut trees that I'm aware of have a very deep tap root. So your hickories, your walnuts, your pecans, really, really deep tap roots. What lesson could we learn about this that could apply to our life? Or is there a scripture that you can think of that refers to roots? Chapter 1. Okay. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. So in our lessons, we've been learning about Moses and Aaron and how Moses was firm and Aaron was not as firm. And so we should all be like the tree with the deep taproot so that we can be firm and not be able to be pushed over. Yes, that's a good, good lesson we can apply. So here's my natural refrigerator. And I tie pots here so that the, if it rains, they don't get washed away. But anyway, who can identify this tree here? You need to look up higher to be able to identify it because it, it has some up there that will give it away. Any ideas? That's a good guess. It, it does uh, does look similar to a birch. Um, it's often confused with a birch. Starts with an S. Sycamore. Sycamore. Yes. So the sycamore has 
fairly shallow roots and you can actually see there's there's a mass of roots right here and there's very little topsoil like there's there's only about there's like a bedrock here and then there's like about three feet of soil here so very shallow soil but it's just the, the roots go out and so we had a drought here and like these roots just go right out in the water and they, and they suck the water but all of a sudden the water was gone and so this tree like its water supply was just like gone but the black walnut doesn't need to just stick its roots in there because it's gone down deep and is mining the water deep 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 down so is there a scripture that you can think of that would relate to roots? I'm thinking of one, I can't remember it. Entirely. Faith is deep as a mustard seed. Yes, that would refer to faith like a mustard seed. There is a scripture in Ephesians. This is Ephesians chapter 3. In verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length, and depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Verse 14, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might, by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height? And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. There are many Christians who are rooted and grounded in Christ, but their roots are very shallow. And when the storm comes, they will be ripped out. They will be destroyed. The, this sycamore tree doesn't have a motivation to go down deep. It doesn't need to because the water is right here. But the black walnut can grow in hard packed soil that the bulldozer packed down that has been completely compacted and somehow that taproot defies gravity and just drills down into the hard pan and goes deeper and deeper and deeper and every day the black walnut goes deeper. 
And then when the storm comes, the shallow-rooted sycamore or the shallow-rooted pine tree or the shallow-rooted oak tree gets ripped out but the black walnut stands because it is rooted and grounded deep. Christians, there is a storm coming and many of you are shallow rooted. You put your roots down into the pool of the world rather than going down deep for that water of life that's deep down. And you'll get ripped out. And it'll be too late. And you'll wish that you had been rooted deeper. It's time to stop lazily putting your roots into the pool. And it's time to determine that in the strength that God gives you, you will go deep and get the water deep that's down deep. And then the storm that's coming will not uproot you. You can read more about this storm that's coming to Christians in Revelation chapter 13. So what do we do to prepare? How do we get deeper roots? You need to pray, Father in heaven, wake me up in the morning so I can spend time in your word and in prayer. Because if you just decide, I'm going to wake up when I need to wake up, you're going to get too tired and you're going to just probably skip it because you need extra sleep. You got to bed late. You can choose to set the alarm clock. You can determine that you'll spend the time. But if you don't ask God for that supernatural alarm clock to wake you up when you need to wake up, you chances are you'll, you won't make it a habit. So that would definitely be step one. The pool of the world is easy to get to. These roots don't, these roots have been here for years. I've been here since 2015 and these roots are not any farther out here than they were when I first moved here in 2015. They've just stayed there. But that black walnut those roots are deeper now than they were when I moved here. It's time, Christians, to stop reading books that are untrue. Christians, it's time to stop watching good movies. Christians, it's time to stop watching football, baseball, basketball. You don't have time for that. The only time that you have is for the Word of God and for books and stories that are true that will strengthen your faith, that will encourage you. Like the stories of people in communist countries who were persecuted and how God gave them strength. You only have time for useful learning, like to study your mechanic book so you can fix your car or to study that book to learn a skill. The books of fiction where it's this pretend story about this imaginary person that lived in this imaginary world, that's you putting your roots into the shallow pool of the world. Anybody can read a book like that. But it's not easy to read the Word of God. You'll read things and you'll be like, what does that mean? Reading God's Word is where you put your roots down deep. And it's not easy, but it's worth it. Any other questions before we close? So the time in the morning reminds me of our character quality this week, which is regularity. Mm -hmm. Yes. So setting a time and mm -hmm. making it on the schedule and regular. Mm -hmm. What would happen to your vehicle if you didn't have a regular time to check the oil and change it? Damage, damage beyond uh, what was easily preventable. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't ever have a regular time to check your oil, what would happen to your vehicle? Parts would disintegrate. I mean, mm -hmm. things would rub together and 
not have the oil mm -hmm. lubricant that they need. Yeah, it, your your vehicle could blow up. Yeah. You know, so you have a schedule that like every certain number of miles you're going to change the oil. You have a schedule that every so often you're going to have the regular habit of checking the oil. If you don't have that regular habit or that schedule, eventually your vehicle will blow up. It's the same way in the Christian life. You need a regular time, a regular schedule of being in the Word of God, being in prayer, going into God's presence, asking for what you need, thanking Him for what He's done. And just like that regular oil, you have a schedule in the same way in your spiritual life. There's maintenance. And if you don't do the maintenance, as a Christian, you're going to blow up. It's really simple. Um, it's not something where you should feel like, oh, you know, I skipped today. God's going to punish me. Don't look at it that way. But just look at it as this is something that I need to do to cooperate with the master mechanic of my life. Any other thoughts or questions? Is there time for baseball? No. Mm. There was a, a young man named W.D. Frizee. And he, went in, he was in a Christian school. And they played baseball. And he loved baseball. And he was good at baseball. But then he learned that God was calling him to give up baseball. And he didn't want to give it up. But, and he gave it up for a while and then he went back to it. But then like his conscience really bothered him. And so he's like, mm, okay, I'm just, and so like he would watch all his friends playing baseball, but he wouldn't do it. His dad wasn't in his life and it was just his mom. And he spent a lot of time just working in the garden, helping his mom in the garden. And then later God gave him a vision and he started a medical missionary school and in that school, he with other people taught other young people to go out and learn these skills and go and help people spiritually and physically with their health. And, and missionaries have gone from that school all over the country and have helped people physically, spiritually, and morally. If W.D. Frizee had continued with his passion for baseball, he could have become a baseball star. Potentially. But it is very, very, very clear if he would have continued on with his passion, he never would have been used by God to start such a beautiful medical missionary school. I went to that medical missionary school. I never met him. He died before, before I could meet him. But the work that he started still lives on. If there's what is best for you, Satan has something that's not necessarily evil, but it's second best. And if you will settle for second best, you will never receive God's best for you. And so, is there time for baseball? Is there time for soccer? Yes, you could make the time, but don't settle for something less than what God wants to give you. And I can guarantee you, if you will spend your time in nature, studying the plants, if you will spend your time studying the, the Word of God, you will gain something that you could never have found in baseball. Never have found in basketball. Don't allow your mind to be distracted. Why does it matter about whether the little ball goes in the hole over there or the bigger ball goes over into that? place over there. Why does it matter? People are dying of diseases that can be prevented. And if we would study and learn herbs, and we would study and learn lifestyle and diet, we could actually help these people to prevent or reverse their diseases. But we don't do it because we're too busy 
our eyes are on a little ball, a little golf ball, or on a basketball, or on a baseball. Or on a, our eyes are on a little ball. Don't spend your time looking at a little ball. Spend your time learning skills with your hands or with your mind, and you will be useful. Any other questions? So, the problem is, is that these things create a distraction and they keep you from doing what the Lord wants us to do. My friends were playing volleyball and they said, Titus, play with us. And I said, no. And one of my friends said, do you not play with us because you feel like God doesn't want you to? And I said, yes. I have learned a lot of different trees, a lot of different herbs, a lot of different skills. I am confident that if I would have pursued my love of basketball or my love of volleyball, I'm confident that I wouldn't be here today teaching you about black walnuts and about their medicinal uses and, and, and these spiritual lessons. I'm confident. There's really not time in my mind to focus on the little ball or the big ball and learn these skills. You really can only master these skills or master the ball. But to have both is not something that I feel that we're capable of. So we don't really have much time left in Earth's history. Mm -hmm. So we need to be doing everything that we can to reach all the people that we can. And, and parents, are you sitting down watching the little ball or the bigger ball and that's where your focus is? Or parents, do you take time to take your children on a walk in the park or do you take them on a hike and take a book with you and say, oh, let, let's learn what this tree is. Do you have time for the ball and at the same time, have time to teach your children all the skills that they need to know for life. How many girls don't know how to change a flat tire if their tire goes flat? How many boys today really don't know? Dad's too busy watching the little ball or the big ball. Mom's too busy putting on makeup and jewelry. Parents are, who call themselves Christians are distracted. And in that distraction, they don't have the time to teach the children the skills that they learned. You know, it's common to see parents give their children money or vehicles. And... My parents didn't say, oh, here's a car for you, Esther. Here, you, you have this car. My, my older sister is Esther. They didn't do that. But they took time to teach us skills. Then we earned money. And then my sister bought a vehicle. My brother bought a vehicle. You know, there's a time and a place for a parent to give their child money. But parents, you may not have much money to give to your children. Give them skills. Invest in them. Teach them these skills. There will be a time when our money is worthless. Read Revelation chapter 18. The people who have skills are the people that are going to do better. Any other questions? Or thoughts? Come on, Smokey. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've given us these trees and you've given us your word. Please teach us. Forgive us for putting our roots into the shallow pools of this world. Give us the strength that we need to put a taproot down deep so when the storm comes, we cannot be uprooted. Make us strong in you. And we ask this in Jesus' name, Yeshua's name, amen.